Hey everyone, Joe Grand here with a introduction and demonstration of the JTagulator. JTagulator is an open source hardware tool that will help you determine the pinout of on-chip debug interfaces on a target circuit board. Other projects do exist that perform similar functionality, but they're limited to just the JTag interface. So I wanted to create something from the ground up that would be expandable and let me not only handle JTag, but handle other types of on-chip debug interfaces as well. The core of the system is a Parallax Propeller 8-core microcontroller that can be programmed through the USB interface. Over here I have a mini USB connector that's going to connect up to the host PC, and the board itself is actually powered over USB as well. Here I have an FTDI serial to USB device and some associated reset and control circuitry. And I'm also using this USB interface to send commands to the JTagulator and receive data back, which can be done with any terminal program of your choosing. It's 115.2 kilobits per second, 8N1. And then this side really is the target device interface with input protection circuitry and level translation to translate the target voltage levels to 3.3 volts to be handled by the propeller. The target voltage portion is just created by a PWM output from the propeller going through some filtering and a op amp in a voltage follower configuration which just powers the left side of the circuitry. We have 24 channels that can each be attached to a terminal block and then I also have these three headers that support the standard bus pirate header. So you can just connect one of these right on, attach the ground lead to your target device, and then just attach these arbitrarily to whatever test points you have. All of the design files, documentation, schematics, bill of materials, everything you need to create your own JTagulator is available on my website, which is www.grandideastudio.com. So let's check out a real world example. For this demonstration, I have a BlackBerry 7290 that's been stripped from its housing. And uh, along the SIM connector area, there are a bunch of different test points. And I've just soldered a header to those test points to make it easy to connect up to the JTagulator. The JTagulator is connected to my computer over USB, so that's providing power to the unit. You can see the green light is on, which means the system's ready to go. On reset, the JTagulator spits out a little header and a colon for command prompts. Now I can hit enter. You can see the response is question mark. If I hit H, there's a current list of commands. The first thing that we need to do before we can start communicating with the target device is to set the target system voltage. So let's go ahead and define that. This system is 3.3, so I just type 3.3 and hit enter. New target voltage set. The first thing we like to do is what's called an ID code scan. So that's if we press letter I. Most devices that are out there that support JTAG have a device ID register. So we can use that to see if any device that's connected to the JTagulator is a valid JTag device. First thing we see is uh, enter the number of channels. For our board, we have eight lines set up, eight unknown pins that are coming from our BlackBerry. Eight channels, 336 possible permutations because we have eight channels, but in the case of ID code scan, we're actually only looking for three different lines, data out, mode select and clock, because we're not clocking data in to read the ID code, we're just clocking data out. So now we're just gonna hit the space bar, and pretty much right away, we get two responses back, and then we see an ID code scan complete. So what we see here are two possibilities of different pinouts for the JTAG interface. Now we can go to the next type of scan to help validate that. The bypass scan requires all four pins of JTAG, and the bypass mode basically will take in data from the TDI line, the data in line, delay it by one clock cycle through a one-bit register, and then output it on the TDO line. That takes a lot longer, so the ID code scan you saw went very quickly. Bypass could take many minutes, up to a few hours, depending on how many channels you need to use. In our case, we're going to do eight channels, 1,680 permutations. We'll probably still take a few minutes, so let's give it a start. All right, so about two minutes have passed and the bypass scan is complete. We see two different results with two different sets of pinouts. So the interesting thing about JTAG is that you can actually chain together multiple devices. So you still use your four connections, but now you can have multiple devices within the chain. So the bypass scan actually checks for that to see how many devices it can see in its chain with that given pin configuration. If you look on the actual PC board, 
of the BlackBerry, there's two core devices here. One is the CPU, it's a digital signal processor, and then you have the phone baseband. Both analog devices parts, both with JTAG capability, and these are the two that are chained together. So there you go. We were able to take a BlackBerry 7290 with an unknown set of test points, connect them up to the JTAGulator, and we were able to figure out which pins were required for the JTAG interface. JTAGulation, successful.